Now, our next guest, we've been hearing rumours from other events that ministers aren't turning up at short notice for some reason. Um, but I can absolutely assure you that Andrew did want to be here. He genuinely hasn't been able to make it. Um, but I think you'll understand why then we asked him for a, a, a video, because he does have an important announcement to make. So now we have Andrew Griffiths, who's the Economic Secretary to the Treasury. Hello and thank you to Rose and to all of you for the opportunity to be part of today's opening session for the Cooperative Congress. I'm so sorry I can't join you in person today, but I felt strongly that I wanted to add my support for the cooperative sector and wider mutuals. This year marks the 152nd Co-op Congress event, which is quite a remarkable achievement. Since its birth, the movement has been based on principles of openness and democratic control. One member, one vote, so that everyone has a stake. Cooperatives and wider mutuals with the values of people and place having a key role add something special and different to the UK financial services sector. They're about giving local people a stake in how organisations should be run, something that in this global world has ironically never been more important. As a Member of Parliament myself, I know that residents in my West Sussex constituency as they do up and down the country, value what cooperatives and wider mutuals do. And with my Treasury Minister hat on, I cannot overstate the contribution cooperatives make to the UK economy today. 7,000 cooperatives across the UK, a combined turnover of 40 billion, close to a quarter of a million employees, and a serious contribution to the UK economy from mutuals more widely accounting for more than 133 billion of income annually. With such impact and potential, I want to make it even easier for you all to do what you do best. Customers tell us that they want you to do more. So as part of this government's financial services and markets bill, we will do more, allowing credit unions in Great Britain to significantly widen their range of products and services, from higher purchase agreements to insurance distribution. This will benefit members and add to the bottom line. Second, we're helping building societies expand their opportunities for growth by providing them with a modernised framework to operate within, updating the Building Societies Act 1986. It'll be part of a wider tapestry of changes to make our financial services more competitive and more supportive of mutuals, allowing them to grow. And early on in my role as Economic Secretary, I was pleased to give government support to a private members bill on cooperatives, mutual insurers and friendly societies. As many of you will know, this bill provides the government with the ability to make regulations for a so-called asset lock, allowing those societies that opt in to have statutory protection against distribution of surplus capital on the sale or conversion of the mutual to a company. Because I think the best way to keep growing the cooperative and wider mutual sector is to prevent it from shrinking. It's a bill that I think will make meaningful change to the communities you serve and had significant support from all parties in Parliament. And finally, I'm really pleased to be announcing some very significant and long awaited news to you all today. I can confirm that the government will be launching a review of the Cooperative and Community Benefit Societies Act 2014 and the Friendly Societies Act 1992, conducted by the Law Commission. With work expected to start later this autumn, this will be the most comprehensive modernisation of the sector for a generation, and it will develop a more modern and supportive business environment which sets cooperatives and friendly societies up for, I hope, another 152 years of growth. We want to get this right for the sector, and we're keen for your continued involvement as the review progresses. So I look forward to sharing updates on this important work. Because this government is on the side of the co-op and wider mutual sector, the connection that you have with your members and the diversity you offer. From changes to the Credit Unions Act to allow greater products and services, to modernising the legislative framework for building societies, introducing an asset lock for co-op mutual insurers and friendly societies, and now launching a deep dive reviews into other legislation. The future of mutuality looks bright and prosperous and together we can learn, inspire and think big for your communities and for the country. Thank you and enjoy Congress.
So wow, you heard it here. First a major uh, review from uh, the Law Commission. This is a huge, huge op opportunity to enable. I'm going to test your cooperative knowledge now. When are we thinking the last whole scale review was of uh, cooperative legislation? Put your hands up if you think it was within the last decade. Ooh. Hands up if you think it was in the last century. No. <laughs> Hands up if you think it was actually in 1893. Wow. With Gladstone and Queen Victoria signed it off. I mean, we've been campaigning like mad and finally, finally, uh, we've got here. Um, and, and I don't take that lightly. You know, it is within the spirit of cooperation that we, you know, we, we achieved that. And yet, obviously, huge thanks to the uh, HMT team for actually securing it, but you know, not without the help of all our federals and infrastructure bodies like our friends at the BSA and ABCOL and AMF, as well as the FCA wrote in, in 2019 for this. So this has been a, a co-op party, of course, a huge effort on behalf of the, the whole uh, movement. And they're not just words. I'm really, really pleased to say that we've got the Treasury team here uh, today and we, we're working through a roadmap, all of us together, so that we can work through that legislation. Uh, there's a round table today on raising finance, which again is a real challenge uh, for cooperatives. Um, and we want to unlock solutions and help to create a fairer society through cooperation. So please, uh, James, just give us a wave, our head of policy developments at the front here. If you've got burning things that you want to talk to James about, we've also got a session uh, later on, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow's session, um, where we're asking you for uh, policy and opinion. So this is a massive opportunity. So please, please please, please uh, make sure you get your voices heard uh, within that because those, you know, cooperative movements so different across the country, uh, you know, every type of co-op is, is different and those, you know, tiny weeny baby co-ops, we want to hear their voice and, and what they're struggling with as much as we hear from uh, the larger cooperatives.